part two here and in this part uh, we're gonna do uh, both of these integrals and um, so we're gonna get um, two for the price of one it's pretty cool and um, some of the details uh, if you need to fill in then I recommend that you watch part one and the video I linked below part one um, but yeah I'm gonna try to go through this efficiently now um, to start uh, Recall that to use the residue theorem, we need to be on a closed contour. And the trick we've always used is that uh, we can um, be on a closed contour if we take a line segment along the real axis, and it's f of z dz. Um, and um, so, so we took a line segment from um, on the real axis from negative r to r, and then it joined it to a semicircular arc. Then we can write the following. Um, um, uh, and then it's going to be CR um, F of Z DZ. Okay. Now, now um, here, instead of actually working with these two integrals, we're going to work with the following integral. First of all, changing from X to Z is simple parameterization, so that shouldn't be a problem. But um, the integral we're going to work with instead of these two is the following, which is... Um, negative infinity to infinity and it's going to be e to the i and then um, cz right I just went from x to z but uh, c e to the i cz and then divided by um, and it's going to be divided by um, z plus b squared plus a squared um, dz now, notice that this is equal to uh, the sum of these two integrals um, with an i in front of the sine integral, right? This here is identical to this because e to the i c z is equal to cosine c z um, plus i times sine c z. So what I, the two things I've circled are equal. So, so then um, you see what we're going to do is find out uh, the answer to this, which will invariably have a real part and an imaginary part. And then we're going to say the real part of the answer is the answer to this integral. And the imaginary part of the answer is the answer to that integral. Yeah? Cool. All right. Sounds like a plan? Cool. Um, now, um, before we start, we need to make some room. So let's get rid of this. Cool. And slide this fella to the left. Now, um, here, if you look at if you look at the norm of um, this here, right, uh, the norm of e to the i c z is one. So it's pretty straightforward to show that by looking at the norm, this part goes to zero. So really, like the closed integral is equal to the integral from negative r to r of f of z d z. And what we're going to do, of course, as I said in part one. And the video I linked in part one even explains it in greater detail is take the limit as r goes to infinity. So that way uh, we could just say, hey, like this integral that we're after, um, it's the same thing as figuring out this integral, which is uh, a closed integral of e to the i c z um, divided by the same denominator, obviously. Um, okay. And I didn't like my writing there, so let me backtrack a little bit. A little bit e to the i c z divided by, um, and then it's, um, yeah, and it's divided by z plus b squared plus a squared dz. Yeah? Cool. All right, now, first, I'm going to, since these two integrals are equal, I'm just going to get rid of that. And then I'm going to uh, slide this back. And now that we've got a closed um contour right a closed integral we can use the residue theorem and that's the whole point right uh, and the residue theorem would say that the answer to this is 2 pi i um, times sum of residues um, okay and we need to find all of the residues for every singularity we have in our contour remember even though I deleted it our contour is a semicircular arc in the upper half plane um, so let's find our singularities because we need to do 2 pi i times sum of residues where we find residues for every singularity. Now, um, here, uh, if we take z plus b squared um, plus a squared 
equal to zero, then we see that we're going to get um, z plus b squared. And you probably don't need this detail equals negative a squared. And from that, we get uh, z plus b will have to equal plus or minus i a. And then last, we get the z will have to equal negative b plus or minus i a. Now, uh, there are two singularities, therefore. And the one we care about is the one in the upper half plane. So that's going to be, um, let's say, z1 equals negative b uh, plus i a. So really, we only have one singularity to be worried about. And therefore, we only have one residue to find. All right. So really, it's not sum of residues. It's just the residue, right? And so let's get rid of this and just say 2 pi i times um, residue of um, f of z, where clearly f of z is this fella, um, residue of f of z at um, z1. Now, I've already talked about in part one and in the video I linked to part one how you'd find residues when you have a rational function where the degree of the denominator is two or more than the degree of the numerator, and that's um, by doing the following. So if you have f of z is equal to n of z over um, uh, d of z, then um, your residue, let's say aj is the residue at zj, is going to be equal to um, n of um, zj divided by uh, d prime of um, zj. And so here, n is that and d is that. So uh, we see that a1, right, the residue corresponding to our one and only singularity, will have to equal um, e to the n of z1, which is e to the um, i times c times z is going to be negative b uh, plus i a and then divided by this divided by and it's going to be divided by um, it's going to be divided by d prime of uh, z1 d prime is going to be two times uh, z plus b right uh, because a is a constant and therefore a squared is a constant so we've got two times z plus b but z is our z1 right we need to evaluate and so we're going to get uh, 2 times negative b plus i a, and then it's going to be plus b, right? Where, again, I've taken the derivative of this, so 2 times z plus b, um, and then z is this, but we still have to do plus b, right? Cool. Now, this is only the residue, right? We still need to multiply by 2 pi i to find uh, the value of our integral. Now, we don't need these guys, so let's get rid of them. Boom. All right. Now uh, we could do this, which is uh, cancel that and that, and um, then we'll get we'll be able to write um, we'll be able to write well a more succinct version of it. But we need to multiply t by two pi i, which will simplify things. So let's get on with that. Two pi i times our one residue, which is e to the i c, and then um, times uh, it's negative b. Uh, plus i a and then uh, all of this divided by all of this divided by and then it's 2 times um, i a right this simplifies to 2 i a right okay cool now uh, we can do the following which is i and i take care of each other 2 and uh, 2 take care of each other and so um, I could get rid of this also we don't need this but we do need the room. So then what we've got here simplifies to the following, which is it equals pi divided by a times, and we need some distributing right up there, right? And then we'll get e to the, and then it's going to be negative um, bci, right? bci, and then... Um, and then it's going to be times by, by exponent rules, right? Times. And then we distribute this to that guy. And i and i are going to make um, i squared, so negative 1. So we're just going to get e to the negative ca, uh, or negative ac, if you prefer that. e to the negative ac. Cool. 
Now we could write this as putting this downstairs. We can write it as pi divided by, and then it's going to be a times e to the ac, and then times um, e to the negative bci, or ibc, however you want to look at it. But wait, we know how to interpret this. It's cosine of negative bc plus i times negative, um, sorry, i times sine of negative bc, right? Okay, so you step back and say, hey, this is cosine of negative bc, but cosine is even, so we could just write cosine of bc. And then sine is odd, so instead of plus i times sine of negative bc, we could write minus, and then i times uh, sine of bc, and voila, we're almost there. Um, get rid of this, and we write higher up the following. Distributing this, we could write the following, which is our answer to this integral is going to be pi divided by a e to the ac and then cosine bc, the real part of our answer, and then I'm going to put the negative so it multiplies pi, and then we're going to get plus, ugh, I don't like that plus sign, plus, and then it's um, i times, and I'll actually, just to correspond to this i, right in red, uh, and then we've got i times, um, and then it's going to be uh, negative pi divided by a e to the ac, and then it's sine, um, and then it's sine um, bc. Yeah? Cool. Um, and there you are. Uh, we've got our final answer, because this final answer has a real part and an imaginary part. Um, and the real part, which is um, this guy here, the real part of our answer, is the answer to this guy. And then the imaginary part, which is this guy here, is the answer to this guy. Yeah? Okay, cool. All right, keep watching. Take care.